Today I'll be presenting my project together with my partner on automated control and diagnostic monitoring system for three phase reduction control. So this project was started from scratch. So the content covered today will be the introduction, more fast protocol, frequency analysis, system overview, software, hardware, data dashboard web publishing, data logging and analytics, and conclusion. So my role will be designing and programming the main program, and then the electrical design installation of the variable speed drive. For Nina will be the A creation, data dashboard, web publishing, designing of the covers for the DSP box, and last but not least, the data logging and analysis. So I would like to refer you to this article here on the Taiwan train development. Huh? Now, induction motors in trains, they are critical for smooth running operation. But let's say an unexpected failure occurs due to fault in the induction motor, consequence that will be had will be train destruction and inconvenience. Severe case, derailment and train infrastructure being damaged, as shown in this background picture here in Taiwan. Okay, so the purpose of the project to design an automated control and monitoring of three-phase induction motor system. Secondly, to identify and alert the operators of arriving fault condition through frequency analysis technique and the motor parameters. Third, the analysis of motor electrical and mechanical measurements. So, the mod bus protocol. So, the mod bus protocol is an open protocol based on the master state relationship and is widely used in the industry. Let's say we have a PLC in the state and the HMI a master. Originally, mod bus was used for serial communication, but now it has been expanded to include TCP, IP, and UDP. So, for our project, we use mod bus TCP, IP, and mod bus RPU using IS485 for the project. Huh? So frequency analysis. So you have a time domain signal, okay? By using the discrete Fourier transform, you deconstruct the signal to become a frequency domain representation to obtain the signal of interest. Okay? So let's look at this case study here, where we have a motor just newly installed on the factory floor. In the second picture here, you can see that the motor drive gear mesh very well the large gear. But after overcome, you can see that the gear do get damaged and it may cause a failure as a result, okay? You can see the first graph here. This was when the motor is just first installed. The vibration spectrum graph is captured using a vibration center attached to the motor. Then, after that, this is the vibration spectrum graph captured after a prolonged period of time when the motor gear is worn out. You can see the increase in amplitude here. And this I also researched through IEEE paper. They also have come to the same conclusion, okay? Then I will be talking about the system overview. So this is our system overview, where we have the VSD driving the induction motor, and the parameters are controlled, are monitored by the current transducer, temperature sensor, and accelerometer. The current transducer is linked to the DAQ, and then here is linked via mod bus TCP IP to the router, and same thing for the VSD, whereas for the temperature sensor and accelerometer is linked via mod bus RTU to the NRPC. And then we have the shared variables for the tablet viewing and the web publishing. And then last but not least, we have the data analysis, which Lina will go through in detail later. Okay, so the software. This is the state transition diagram I've designed for my main program. Okay, and then I've used the top level baseline design architecture for lab view. So we have the user interface event handling loop, the action cases, state logic, then the message handling loop, the main one the accelerometer while loop and the system action and state logic preview. So, the user interface event handling loop, what is it used for? It's used to handle the user events on the front panel. Then after that, we have the state logic, which is used for decision making. This is this part here is where the action cases are executed. Okay? And then we have the action cases. So in total in the main program, we have 34 action cases. So, it, so the action cases are decreed using a decreed element now. Okay? And this is the front panel of the main program here, where the motor parameters are being monitored. Okay? And this is the, the demo setup. I'll pass the time to Dina now. I'll be talking about the action engine created for this project. So for this project, we have action engines can start and manipulate data. And the following will be the function for the action engine. So firstly, this is for the BSD. It is to control like automatic or manual work, uh, and also control the frequency of the BSD. And also display the parameters as shown like frequency, speed, voltage, power. Next, this is the AE created for the temperature sensor, which displays the temperature. And this is the AE created for the current transducer, which displays the current. And this is the AE created for the accelerometer, which displays the variable of vibration and also the frequency and time domain graph respectively. And this is the AE created for the 
stop measuring unit, which is the power and the rotational speed. All this AE created will be added into the main DI design budget. Now I'll talk about the hardware design. The hardware design will be split into three sections. The first will be discussed by me, and then the third one will be discussed by them. So the first one is the measurement expert, LMD, which is to make accurate markings for the metal and enclosure casing, and ensure components can fit into the metal base plate. First, the metal box is being we do it from scratch. And after that, these are the fixtures that we use to do it. And then the design and 3D print, this is the process. The process is similar to the first one, just that in this case, the cover for binding holes is designed for safety purpose and the cover for the knob is designed for aesthetic purpose. Later you will see during the hardware work. This is how fast to check. Also, oh, this affects the feature background which I did up for the variable speed drive, the free phase installation, the wiring diagram. So inside here, what we have is that we have a circuit breaker, a DC switching relay for switching of single phase and three phase. Then we have a DC power supply here to power up the DSD. So the end product inside here will be the actual wiring diagram of the three phase DSD here. Okay, I'll hand back the thumb to Lina. So what we're talking about data dashboard and foundation. So data dashboard is when the shared variables which is created previously in the main DI will be shared uh, transferred into the tablet, which shows the main, like the magnitude of it. Then the web publishing is actually the front panel of my main, main DI is being shown on the computer. But the thing with the web publishing is that uh, in web publishing, you can control and also display, but on the account of it, granted contract access. Next, this is, I'll be talking about data logging and analysis. We take readings in three conditions, normal, single phasing, and overloading conditions. The last two are called conditions. So for single phasing, right, this diagram show that in one of the phase, there's no current going through, which is an open circuit. This is the experiment conducted. So for single phasing test, the constant is the load, and the variable is the current selected in the phase, in the selected phase. And overloading test, the current will be adjusted above 3.5 ampere, and then the control is the speed of the motor, the variable is the load. Next is the data analysis. So some uh, small background is there is two types of uh, model base and signal base. Model base use mathematical model and signal base use measured values from the sensors. And the signal base are main, the commonly used are these three main ones. This is the uh, findings we get from our experiment. So uh, as seen from here, the red circles are where the fault occurs. So this is U, V, and W graph. So for U graph, there's a uh, Initially, the current was here and it spikes up a bit when W goes to zero. So this is where single phasing occurs. And this is the spectrogram for single phasing. So as seen here, the red spots are where the uh, single fault occurs. So where you can see there's more spots there, as there's more red spots. The red spot means higher amplitude there. Next is the overloading analysis. So the red line here means the current is above the rated current for the motor, which is at 3.55. So in this case, the current is above the red line. And then for overloading, the temperature, there's a spike where there's a red circle there. This is where the fault occurs. So in conclusion, current measurement is significant in both sets, but individually, single phasing is significant where there's a accelerator measurement and overloading is more significant in the trigger measurement. So in conclusion for the entire project, all the hardware components installation is complete, automated contract monitoring of the motor, and also the data analysis is complete. Now it's Q&A.